For most people, when they think of pirates, they think about the golden age of piracy, of Caribbean islands and notorious outlaws such as Blackbeard, Vane, or Rackham. Men who, it's imagined, seized ships with fabulous treasure troves, drank lots of rum, and had a jolly old time. In reality, however, the lives of these men were usually violent, short-lived, and not really that successful. In contrast, at the height of their power, the pirates of East Asia were organized, resourceful, and lucrative. Let's travel back in time now to 1855 and talk about these pirates, the Royal Navy, and a little battle off the Gulf of Liaotung on the China coast. Welcome to Walk the Plank. Dwarf Raiders During the 14th century, most of the pirates on the China coast were actually Japanese. They came from Western Japan, where life was harsh because of the frequent famines and pandemics, however, their ringleaders were usually Chinese men who enticed them into piracy. These men were known as dwarf raiders and were essentially bandits who used their vessel for transportation, going ashore and attacking helpless settlements. In 1370, one pirate company attacked a Korean province where they destroyed 30 warships. In 1374, a fleet of these pirates attacked the Korean coast, burned down an army barracks, and killed thousands of men. The raids had started small with a couple of vessels, but the pirate leaders soon assembled small fleets, enabling them to capture richer targets and grow their companies to hundreds of vessels and thousands of men. By the mid-16th century, Chinese targets were at a peak, and Japan and Korea became known as the Isles of Pirates. The Mingxi, a Chinese historical work, describes how in 1553, large-scale raids were taking place along the China coast, when the pirates attacked with a combined fleet consisting of several hundred warships that covered the sea. Great Opportunities By the 17th century, China was ruled by the Qing Dynasty. The leaders were not really keen on foreigners or their overseas business. So, most foreign trade was restricted to Canton, and the merchants flocked there. As the shipping routes for the rest of Asia went through the South China Sea, just to the south of the city, the opportunity for piracy flourished. The Chinese were pioneers in many things, gunpowder, the compass, and paper making, to name but a few. Along with this went piracy. The earliest recorded accounts were in the 4th century BC, during the Chao Dynasty. Although they were probably skilled in the practice long before records even began, Piracy also continued in China long after it had been controlled everywhere else. During the 1850s, there were several pirate groups marauding the southern China coast. The Royal Navy launched a series of campaigns into the Gulf of Liaotung and the surrounding areas in 1855 to try and control pirate activities. There were many sea battles during this time, and hundreds of pirates were killed. What a load of junk. Commander Edward Wetsby Vanistart was in charge of a sloop of war named Bitten. For most of the 18th and 19th centuries, the Royal Navy sloop of war were unrated combat vessels, gunships with a single gun deck. She was accompanied by a steamer named Payashan. They proceeded on the 18th of August to the head of the Gulf of Liaotung, where they came across around 40 junks, two of which were lockers. A junk is a type of sailing ship that has fully battened sails. They were used by Chinese traders around Southeast Asia. The hull usually has a horseshoe-shaped stern with a high poop deck. Inside, the junk was divided into several separate internal compartments, which helped to strengthen the ship. These types of vessels are mentioned in the 12th century book Ping Zhao Table Talks by the maritime historian Zhu Yu, and a couple of centuries later, by the Muslim explorer Ibn Battuta. However, the Lorca had Chinese-style batten sails, but with a European-style hull. This meant it was able to carry more cargo and needed a smaller crew because it was easier to handle. It also made it a faster vessel and easier to repair. Commander Vansittart saw that the junks and lorkas were located near the mouth of the Fukan River, but because the rain was so heavy and there was a thick mist, he was unable to tell how many of the pirate ships were actually there. Both Bitten and Pavishan sailed towards the bay before weighing anchor for the night, just over two miles away from the pirate fleet. The next morning, the pirates formed two divisions and began to advance on the British ships, initiating the battle. Once the pirates were in range, they opened fire with their cannon. Their armament mostly consisted of 18-pounder long guns, the kind that were often used as main guns on frigates during the early 19th century. The heavy caliber guns gave the pirates further range. The British returned fire, and the two sides dueled for about 10 minutes, but only the pirates were able to make any hits. 
The sloop Bitten received the most fire from the Chinese pirates and she was struck a few times before she could achieve her first hit. For the most part though, the pirates were pretty bad shots and the majority of their fire passed either over or through the rigging and sails of both Royal Navy ships. As the pirates came within closer range of Bittern, her broadsides became more accurate and she raked several of their ships and severely damaged them. During the Age of Sailing ships, raking fire was cannon fire directed at the front or back of an enemy vessel. Although the target area was smaller compared to firing on the target ship's broadside and more likely to miss, if it did hit, the reward was greater, because the shot would pass through a larger part of the ship, causing more damage to the sails, hull, cannon, and crew. Also, the enemy would have less chance of returning fire. A stern rake, one on the rear of the ship, was likely to cause more damage than one on the front bow, which was stronger, curved, and could deflect the shot and damage to the stern usually meant impairment to the rudder, which meant that the enemy was unable to steer their ship. Now, with many of their vessels out of action, the pirates had no choice but to call a retreat and try to regroup. A plan to trick the British was devised whereby the pirates escaped through a maze of sandbars and reefs in the hope that the navy ships would run aground. The scheme failed though, as the Bittern was able to maneuver around the perilous waters and still keep up her heavy fire. The two Lorcas, being the ships that had fired the most accurate shots along with six other junks, were sunk. The other 30-odd vessels managed to escape, towing away at least five badly damaged junks. It was estimated that around 300 pirates were killed or wounded, although none were captured. A few of the pirates were said to be Europeans. The battle lasted about an hour and no British servicemen were killed during the fighting. Neither Bitter nor Pavishan received too much damage. An earlier victory. Bittern had already been involved in operations against the pirates along with HM steam sloop Rattler. The Navy had some brilliant success near Hong Kong with the help of a United States frigate named Powhatan. On May 29th, the Rattler reported the destruction of several pirate junks in the harbors of Sanchao. Each junk that was destroyed had between 50 and 60 pirates on board. There was one large junk with 14 heavy guns and one with 12 two smaller junks with 12 pounders and two large fishing boats without big guns. The expedition started from Hong Kong and searched around the island south of Macau. After receiving some information from China, the commander of the steam sloop Rattler spotted a pirate chief with several armed junks that were keeping in the shore where the water is shallow, preventing the ship reaching the Rattler or her shot and shell doing the pirate leader or his vessels any harm. Believing that the pirate leader would stay where he was, the Rattler went back to Hong Kong and sought the help of Captain McClooney of the US steam frigate Powhatan. He provided a volunteer force of two paddle box boats and a cutter, each with a 12 pounder manned with 66 seamen and 28 marines under the command of Lieutenant Pegram. With the help of an interpreter named Mr. Caldwell, another small steamer, the Eaglet, also went along. The Rattler, along with the boats and the steamer, went back and anchored near to where the pirates were last seen. Several junks were spotted and a Lorca was seen trying to escape. Rattler and Powhatan went to intercept her. As they neared the Lorca, the pirates began to fire their ineffectual guns. Fire was returned by five 24 pounder rockets. Alarmed, the pirates, numbering in all 34 junks, crowded with guns and men, hoisted their sails and made off. The navy boats gave chase and the larger junks on reaching a small island made a stand and with their broadsides towards the advancing vessels, they fired with much rapidity and in an excellent direction. The fire was returned with shell and grape and by rapidly closing in amidst a shower of shot, the junks were captured. The crew jumped into the water to escape. A small group of men were left in command while the boats went after the other pirates. They fled up a creek and inland to a large lagoon, but were soon captured. In all, nine war junks with 130 guns of varying sizes, along with nine trading junks, were captured. All of the pirate vessels were burned. Two American men were killed and 11 were wounded, along with seven British men wounded and three killed. It was thought that at least half of the pirates, about 500 men, were either wounded, drowned, or killed. The pirates used spears, muskets, and stink pots along with their guns. One of the junks had 21 guns mounted. Stink pots were incendiary weapons, an earthenware vessel filled with gunpowder, sulfur, nails, and shot that was thrown onto the decks of enemy boats. They were used not just to cause injury, but also in the hope that the stench would be so bad that the enemy would have no choice but to jump into the water to escape. It was not long after this, in August of the same year, that the Bittern, accompanied by the Pavishan steamer, accomplished the capture or destruction of 20 junks, 
whose piratical outrages had for some time previously infested the coast of China and greatly obstructed the legitimate channels of trade. Commander Vansittart, who was in charge of the Bittern and the China Station until 1855, was honorably mentioned for his service. A month after Liotong, he destroyed another fleet of 40 war junks at Sheipu. There, at the practical stronghold, he rescued a group of English women who had fallen prey to the pirates. For this, he received the official thanks of the Chinese authorities and was presented with an award from the British. For the most part, pirates are thieves and murderers who just happen to travel by water. Despite their romanticized characters, the only thing that distinguishes one from another is nationality. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank. Please subscribe if you enjoy these videos, and I'll see you next week for another one. Cheers!